everybody can see the sun is shining on this uh, very pleasant Sunday afternoon and I've suddenly realised it's late spring and it's stick making season in earnest. Um, there's a horticultural gardens, Aberglasny, uh, a lot of people have heard of it, it's one of our biggest uh, tourist uh, attractions in uh, South uh, West Wales and they've been very kind enough to invite me to their opening of their new forest walk and gardens and uh, they thought it would be nice if I would uh, maybe bore some people to death with stick making. So what I thought uh, would be very nice for them, that, that is uh, Aberglasny, is the fact that I was very fortunate to uh, be offered and I've uh, recently acquired quite a lot of wood that came from Aberglasny Gardens um, six years ago uh, when they were making what is called their U Tunnel. So anybody visiting the gardens uh, would be fascinated to see that. And the U wood had to obviously be thinned out and another stick maker acquired the wood and unfortunately he never got round to using it because obviously you've got to leave it to air dry and uh, season and so as you can see uh, there's it comes in classic log forms um, actually recently been asked by somebody who said where'd you get your wood from and I was very tempted to say trees but uh, that would be a, a bit grumpy um, so I thought it might be interesting for those of you who are interested to see how the wood arrives. You've then got to use a myriad of tools uh, around. Uh, I don't have a bandsaw. That is one of the uh, uh, probably uh, things on Santa's shopping list for me uh, to get a nice bandsaw. So it has to be done by hand, which means laboriously trimming down these logs um, is one that, uh, as you can see, has been trimmed out earlier. And you has this wonderful uh, heartwood, which is darker. Um, and then obviously you've got the uh, outer creamy wood. And it gives the wood a tremendous uh, patina and grain system. And frankly, is one of my most favourite woods. This is a stick that uh, I've just completed. Um, it's a turned out shepherd's crook um, and when it's uh, sanded and polished and uh, you bring up the grain as you can see it produces this gorgeous uh, I suppose you could call it acorn brown and creamy colour and lovely uh, textures in the wood so it is a, a very very popular wood for uh, stick making so there's a couple that uh, uh, or we're already uh, ready to go as it were. So after you've mucked around with your wood you would try to uh, get blanks. Here's a blank which I've been experimenting with some shapes on just to see what I could make out of it. Um, this one actually <laughs> as you can see hand sawing and following the grain uh, gives you some irregular shapes. It would have been ideal if that was flat. So this actually will probably be becoming uh, a butter knife. Uh, butter knives in you are a, uh, a long-standing tradition and are extremely attractive uh, uh, and look really brilliant on the table. And being a, a wonderful hardwood, dishwasher proof um, and will last years. So once I've got a blank sorted and marked out, then the next step is to cut it out and once you've cut it out, um, I've got one here uh, that's already been just roughed out. So that's just been roughed out with uh, uh, a handsaw and uh, you shape it around and get the approximate shape. And then you start with rough sanding uh, with heavy files and rasps uh, to make a shape. So if you see that that's coming on. And once I've got the shape formulated, then I put a shaft in it already because that makes it much easier to obviously work uh, in your vices. Uh, but it also provides tremendous strength 
uh, when you, I mean that's embedded in there about the same depth. So when it's mounted into the shaft, that's why I describe my sticks as working sticks. I know these are going to uh, uh, certainly stand up to good use. So when you rough them out, the next stage up from that is some filing. Uh, so you've rasped it to those rough shapes and you can see all the knocks and knurls and gnarls in it that you've got to take out. And then with finer degrees of finer sanding, uh, not sanding, sorry, at this stage, with files, you then start making a shape. And when you make a shape, you've got to follow the grain of the wood, because otherwise, unfortunately, you're going to get splits, and sometimes you don't notice it until you've actually got to this stage, and you've suddenly seen that you've, you've missed the grain, and you've got a, uh, a nasty fault in it, and it's just no good, you've got to bin it, and it becomes jewellery rather than uh, a stick handle because obviously it's not going to be load bearing. So when you've got it to that sort of shape and that sort of finish which is smooth and approximate to shape you then start with sanding uh, and as you sand into something um, here's one that is rough shaped but I've just started to brush it over with some sanding and you can start to see how the wood darkens slightly and it also brings out the, the grain more positively. Um, that's going to be an otter. So it'll be a walking stick, uh, right-handed. I've made it for a right-handed person, assuming it will be. And uh, there's an otter. I've got a horrible feeling that my uh, otter carvings all look a bit like uh, a potato. But still, it's an otter potato. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll be happy to leave it at that. Um, these are the, all the different shapes that you take from the wood, but you, 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 the wood tells you what shapes to make. Um, here's some guidelines. You see, I was looking for uh, how the wood uh, would run to uh, produce that. That gives it good strength that way and good strength that way, and it's quite literally grew in the tree. Uh, in, in, sorry, it would be. That's right. It grew in the tree that shape. Uh, with a branch that came out. So you always look for natural turns. Uh, just to show you what I mean by faults, uh, that, if I was working on that, I would look for another piece of wood because as you sanded that down, that would probably run through as a fault and split. And why it would split is because at some time behind this was a, a twig had grown out and that had obviously affected the heartwood. Uh, the other thing you've got to look for is obviously splits. Um, this piece is, is going to become a, uh, a, a carving, in fact. I shall probably put a, a, a nice uh, wood spirit face on it because there are splits already showing in it and that wouldn't stand up uh, to stick making but will make a really gorgeous coloured uh, wood spirit. So having done that, you then get into it with successive sandings. Um, here's one in that shape that I showed you and this has just been taken down to the ultra fine uh, uh, hand sanding material which is 600 grit. I use 600 grit and then treble O steel wool uh, to just really give it the sort of final sheen and as you can see although this has just been sanded there's absolutely no oil treatment on that I mean, it gives you this beautiful, almost coffee ice cream effect with the uh, darker heartwood. You can see where the heartwood runs and uh, how then the lighter outside wood grains. And it really makes a very, very attractive wood. Well, I, I think it does. As you can probably sense, it's one of my favourites. Um, that's a really uh, nice thumbstick. And again, down to 600 grain, it's already uh, gives you a polished feeling. And the beautiful thing about these is if you are walking or you're using them, they're always going to feel warm. You're never going to get that horrible metallic feeling or coldness of plastic. Um, uh, here's another one, uh, which I, I, I think is one of the most attractive uh, uh, grains I've uh, come across so far. It's, a, it's got this ice cream swirl in it. When you used to soften up ice cream and you put a squeeze of chocolate sauce in it or something and whirl it round, it gives it all that sort of wonderful effect, uh, which obviously uh, people people look for, uh, and it becomes a treasured item. 
Uh, this is a lightweight ladies uh, cane. Uh, I might have to shorten that a little bit uh, for obvious reasons. They're all, these all are mounted on hazel at the moment. Uh, hey, because uh, about two years ago I, I coppiced a lot of uh, hazel stuff and uh, uh, there's lots of different colorations in hazel. I, I, hazel is often sneered at. Um, people say, well, it's so common. Uh, is, it, is it really uh, up to uh, uh, hardware? Well, it is. It's extremely flexible. And here's some uh, uh, different staffs. These uh, are now weighting straightening, which we're doing here with an application of steam with my steam boiler over there, which uh, we, we put a uh, a blanket over the top and just uh, get it nice and hot under a steam condition um, and then trap it in this uh, vice here which is uh, just uh, an ordinary Black & Decker uh, uh, workbench vice and just by trapping it you can then start taking some of the big turns out of it and then for final uh, taking out some of the small bends uh, a very trusty uh, heat gun. Uh, you've got to be extremely careful with the heat gun because you can only warm the wood to uh, almost too hot to touch but if you go too heavy on it you'll damage the bark and it will actually singe and burn. But then by applying specific heat into a, a shaped vise like this is you can take out some of the more predominant uh, and prominent uh, sharper bends um, and it's then taken out the, the, the really bad bend that was in there, um, but still, if you looked along it uh, like a gun sight, you would see that there is still quite a big turn in this here. Now, depending on the style of stick, if it was going to be a hard working stick, uh, you know, for taking to the farmer's market, I may not be too uh, concerned about working that any finer because with all the uh, uh, little twigs that have been taken off that when that's polished uh, it'll look nice but on the other hand uh, when you get a big long bow in something like this this is what you would take out with the steam uh, to get it straight and then that would leave a, a little dog leg here which you would then take out with this uh, hardwood it's a piece of oak uh, which is just cut to a, a reciprocal shape and just by gently vising it with heat you can take it out. Stick straightening for me is one of the most boring things on earth but it's just got to be done um, and it does produce nice results when you uh, really work at it um, and some of these uh, black thorns which I'll show you which are highly prized and very difficult to find really to get a straight black thorn uh, because obviously there is only so much bend you can take out um, that, that I've worked on and worked on, there's a little bit more to do just in this, this shape. But that, that will make a very nice uh, thumb stick, blackthorn, uh, treasured. Uh, and majority, as I've already said, are hazels. This mottling effect is when you get uh, lichen, or lichen, whichever people like to describe it. If you remembered, I showed you uh, this type of growth. Um, this is what actually mottles the wood and once you just knock off the uh, bark and allow it to polish up it does produce a really uh, nice uh, mottly shade whereas the blackthorn gives you this uh, like a vine. It, it'll open up and sort of make a, a nice wavy pattern in it. So as you can see lots to do and to be quite frank not uh, uh, not much more time, but again, just to show you, uh, this is the when it's been oiled because there's only oil. There's not uh, any uh, um, dyes or colorations in that. It's just plain uh, two 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 boiled linseed oil. As you can see, it it does change the color slightly. But obviously, whoops, yeah, it will do. Uh, but this one. It will probably come down to that sort of coloration um, and something a bit uh, uh, darker in the hazel uh, will come down more to that color. Uh, 
So it's really just a question of seeing what's there in the wood and uh, I like a natural stick. I don't like them to look like they've been turned on a lathe, which uh, some people do. Uh, turn sticks on a lathe, that is. So there we are. That's what I'm keeping busy on in Shed World at the moment. Um, hardly time to uh, uh, use the old uh, seat, although as you can see everything else is covered in dust except that. So I think, uh, I think the bottom keeps that one well polished when I'm having a brew up and uh, just contemplating my sticks. So that's the yew wood story. Uh, I've got some apple fruit woods are very popular. Uh, I've got some um, ash which makes a nice uh, creamy light coloured handle um, and I've also uh, managed to find some boxwood. Now boxwood gives a, a, a very intense yellow effect. Um, now I'm not sure whether I shall use that for carving because it gives a very very sharp clean image when you carve with uh, chisels on it or whether uh, I'll look to make sticks with it. Not quite sure but at the moment it's the U wood uh, U rules and as we uh, go out, uh, as I'm heading off now for a cup of tea time and go put my feet up, um, you'll see in the outside wood store, which is normally full of uh, planks and things, which I make my birdhouses from, um, uh, uh, it's now actually full of logs uh, from Aberglasny. So Aberglasny, last weekend, 28th and 29th uh, of April, if anybody's seeing this and you're in South Wales or wherever you are and you fancy coming along, you can come and meet me. I'll be working there. I'll be doing some actual uh, demonstrations of work, maybe inviting one or two people to have a go uh, and hopefully encouraging a few more people to uh, have a crack at stick making. Uh, Aberglasny, you can look them up on the web. It's a lovely day out. Come and see us for the last weekend uh, of this month. So, hope to see you all there.